Hey, what's up, Stock Compounders? Brad here. So today I'm going to do a discounted cash flow valuation of ASUS. Okay, so we found out recently that Nick Sleep, uh, in the book Richer, Wiser, Happier, sold about half of his Amazon position in 2018 at around $1,500 per share. He had that cash kind of sitting for six months, maybe a year. And finally, he plowed it into ASUS, okay? Uh, so I thought, well, why don't we do a DCF on ASUS to see if it's somewhere near intrinsic value? Because if it's even uh, in the ballpark of intrinsic value based on a DCF, it could be really interesting to look at. You know, it's probably one of these scale economies shared businesses that Nomad was so focused on. Uh, so it could have could be a great long term compounder if we can get it at a reasonable price. So first, I want to talk about what is ASUS. We're going to look at their annual report, uh, and then we're going to jump into the DCF. So this is the 2020 annual report from ASUS website about us. We are an online retailer for fashion loving 20 somethings around the world. Our purpose is to give our customers the confidence to be whoever they want to be. Through our market-leading app and web experience, ASUS customers can shop a curated edit of 85,000 products sourced from 850-plus of the best global and local third-party brands alongside our mix of fashion-led in-house labels. We aim to deliver a truly frictionless experience for our customers. Sounds a lot like Amazon. Uh, with an ever greater number of payment methods and hundreds of local delivery and returns options. Dispatch from state-of-the-art fulfillment centers in the UK, US, and Germany. So they're headquartered in the UK, but they're a global on online uh, retailer uh, for fashion, targeting 20-somethings, okay? So let's take a look at a discounted cash flow valuation for the company. So uh, the, the yellow boxes are the inputs that, that we need to find from the annual report or, or elsewhere. Uh, and then you know everything else is automatically generated from formulas that I have embedded in this spreadsheet. So uh, the first things we need here are growth rates. How quickly, and these are growth rates for the free cash flow, okay? Um, you know, if I was a full owner of the business, how much cash could I take out each year and the business could still run, right? Could still do its thing. That's, that's what free cash flow is. Um, so what is the growth in free cash flow? I'm going to have a number for years one to five, and then a number for beyond year five, six to 10, okay? And then we're gonna assume we're just gonna sell the business at the end of year 10 for a 15 multiple of free cash flow. So that's what this last uh, row here is in the DCF calculation. Uh, it's the terminal value that's discounted back to today. So for the growth rate, years one through five, uh, I'm going to use ticker terminal. Okay, I love ticker terminal. It's it's an awesome way to get financials for companies that are outside of the U.S. Uh, some of the services I use for U.S. companies, Morningstar, Value Line, they don't really support uh, companies outside of the U.S. very well. Ticker terminal does. So I'm going to go to the financials section of ASC, which is ASUS. And I want to look at the growth rate for operating income over the last 10 years. Okay, So back in March of 2011, operating income was around 29 million British pounds. Okay, And then the most recent number, last 12 months, uh, is 228 million British pounds. So I simply used... Uh, a, compound annual growth rate calculator with these two endpoints over 10 years, and I got 23%. So the company is growing operating income at 23% annually over the last decade. 
so I'm going to assume they're able to continue that for the next five years. Now, years six through 10, I'm going to assume it's going to drop off. Okay, so I'm basically cutting it in half, that growth rate. I'm going to assume they're going to kind of run into some size uh, limitations, some slowdown based on how large of a company they are. Now, that may or may not be true. You've got to do your own homework on that. Uh, but that's the assumption that I'm making here. So growth rate, years 6 through 10, 12% per year. I'm using a discount rate of 10%. That's what I like to use as a discount rate. It's kind of my rule of thumb. Uh, terminal value, 15 for for a, a solid business, uh, a great business, which I would consider ASUS uh, a great business. Uh, so uh, a multiple of free cash flow of 15 is what we're going to use to get our terminal value. Uh, last 12 months, free cash flow. Okay, so in order to project forward free cash flow for the next 10 years, I need a starting number of free cash flow. So here's how I'm going to get that. Uh, let's shorten these down a little bit. So I want to know, I'm going to use my last 12 months of operating income. Okay, that's the first number I'm going to use. Then I'm going to come in here to this cash flow statement. And I want to subtract from that last 12 months operating income, uh, CapEx, and purchase of intangible assets. Usually what purchase of intangible assets means is they acquired a company. Okay. Um, so if you add these two, CapEx and purchase of intangible assets, that's about 108 uh, million British pounds. So we're going to subtract... 108 million from that 228 million from operating income to get my estimate of free cash flow. Uh, now keep in mind, the, these are not linear numbers. I mean, the, they're very lumpy, the, both the capital expenditures and the operating income. So, you know, it's important to do your own work and really get a sense for what's the, what's the best fit. What are the best numbers to use to project uh, free cash flow forward for ASUS. Uh, you can see here cash acquisitions. I'm not considering that because that cash came right out of the balance sheet uh, in the cash and cash equivalent. So that's that's already accounted for. Um, so we're just going to consider purchase of intangible assets and CapEx from the last 12 months. So that's going to give us our last 12 months free cash flow of $120 British pounds. Uh, excess capital or cash on the balance sheet. We simply go into balance sheet, last 12 months, 92 million. And you can see there's a big difference here. That, that difference is you know, that cash that was used for that acquisition. So you know, we're all square there. So we get 92 million in cash, which I put here, and that automatically drops down to right here. Uh, we're going to look up the debt. So I want the total debt from the balance sheet for the last 12 months. Now, Ticker does something nice. Uh, it gives supplementary data, okay? Because uh, total debt isn't given directly in the balance sheet. Um, so Ticker calculates that. The total debt here is 330 million. Okay, I'm rounding to the nearest million. 330 million. So you can see net debt. Uh, that's what I get if I take the cash, uh, or, or in this case, take the debt minus the cash. Uh, and, and that works out. That math uh, works out. So uh, total debt, 330 million. We've got right here. Uh, so that's going to calculate, you know, what is the value of equity um, by, you know, uh, summing all of these present values. We're projecting free cash flows forward using these growth rates, and then we're discounting them back to the present using the 10% discount rate. Um, one year back, two years back, three years back, uh, and the terminal value is discounted 10 years at 10%. 
So we sum all of those, we get the present value of future cash flows, uh, which is 55.4 billion uh, British pounds. Add the cash, subtract the debt, and we're left with 5.162 uh, billion to equity. Now, in order to get from the total equity to the equity per share, we need to know how many shares there are outstanding. So in order to find that, uh, that's on the balance sheet as well. And it's all the way down here. If you look at the supplementary data, total shares out on filing date. Okay. So this is going to be our most recent filing with how many shares there are outstanding. 99.57 million shares okay so I just plug that in right there and I get the value per share simply uh, the value to equity uh, divided by the shares outstanding we get fifty one dollars and eighty four cents that's my estimate of value um, and obviously that that presumes that my assumptions come true right they're correct for the growth rates uh, for the free cash flow, you know, so there, there's some assumptions in there that you need to do some work on. Uh, the current price we can see here uh, is, let me move this right back here, 52.12 British pounds, okay, 52.12. So we are effectively there. We're at fair value based on my assumptions in this discounted cash flow valuation for ASUS. So that's great. That, that's, that's intriguing to me. Um, now I need to better understand, you know, why does Nick Sleep like this business? Does, does it really fit the scale economies shared model that Nomad was, was really focused on? which include players like Amazon, Costco, Berkshire Hathaway. Um, but I, I am going to look deeper into this one. If you guys have any information, if you've seen any write-ups, uh, any reports on ASIS, uh, or know of other investors who own ASIS, please let me know in the comments. I, I want to dig a little deeper into this uh, online fashion retailer. Uh, and of course, Nick Sleep's business partner, uh, Zakaria, bought Boohoo, which is, uh, I guess, a direct competitor of Asus in the UK. So, you know, Boohoo currently looks a little bit frothier in terms of price. Um, it's a little bit smaller as well. Uh, but the, you know, the price chart looks looks a lot better. So if you look at 10 years on ASUS, it looks very cyclical, right? Look at look at these ups and downs. Uh, and, you know, we've gotten a 2.3x over the last decade uh, on ASUS. If we had held through those ups and downs. Now, Boohoo is a much different chart. Uh, let's see. Let's get Boohoo, Boo. Um, overall, so we don't we're not going back as far with Boohoo. It may have IPO'd in 2014. Um, I believe Asus IPO'd in like 2000, so uh, an uh, an older company. But Boohoo, you've got what is this? Almost a 5x in uh, seven years. So much more compelling uh, historically from a return perspective. Uh, but, you know, Asus is making some, some pretty compelling acquisitions. Uh, it seems like they're really gearing up to make a big splash in the online fashion retailer space. So I've reached out to a few of my friends who live in the UK. I'm trying to figure out, you know, what is their impression of these companies? Doing a little homework there. But again, if you guys have any info about Asus or Boohoo, uh, let me know in the comments. Um, so, so that's, that's where we're at for ASUS compelling. I'm going to dig deeper and, uh, that's all I got guys. Thank you for watching today and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.